Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Well, the 2022 boa breeding season is headed towards its peak with hopefully a lot of great baby boa litters just around the corner. Today I want to give you an update on my boa breeding progress. We'll look at some of my gravid females and I'll point out some of the signs where they can be feel confident they're gravid. I'll discuss some, some breeding projects that probably didn't work out for me this year. And I'm also going to say a little bit about my sales terms, so be sure to stay tuned for that. So I've had quite a bit of activity in the approximately one month since my last breeding update and I feel a little bit more confident about where my breeding season is headed and it looks really good so far. So as you've been following the channel, you probably know I have a record number of pairings this year, pairing up a lot of new stuff that I haven't paired up in the past as well as a lot of things that I've bred before and you know hopefully try to produce every year. I've had apparent post ovulation sheds in quite a few of my females who are now behaving as though they're gravid. In some cases I've seen ovulation, other cases I've missed it, but my philosophy on breeding boas is to let nature take its course and I don't really interfere with the pairs all that much other than to, my, than to do my basic husbandry and feeding and things like that. So it's been kind of a long haul. Uh, the breeding season has been going on here since November. So we're getting, we're about uh, six months into the breeding season. And I have right now, maybe about half of my pairings still together. So, you know, if a female's obviously gravid and the male has stopped showing any interest in her, I'll sometimes separate them, but I don't want to separate them too soon because, you know, last year I had a, a few bow females that appeared gravid and they didn't turn out to be gravid. Uh, so I still have to gather some of the pairs, especially the true red tails for some of them, which, you know, they can be born as late as September and October, you know, so the female might not become gravid until like June. And although I still can't guarantee exactly which ones are gravid and which ones are going to produce large litters versus small litters and what babies I'm going to have available, I can say that at this point, I'm pretty confident that about half of my pairings are gravid. I would say about a quarter of them aren't gravid and probably are not or I would very, be very surprised at this point if they were successful pairings this year and then about a quarter I'm still not quite sure just gotta you know wait and see and uh, we'll have a look at some of my gravid females in a minute here but I just wanted to first say you know unfortunately one of the pairings that doesn't look to be successful this year are my Argentine boas. This is my male, this is a uh, Max Pink Bloodline. This guy, I paired up for the first time this year, and I was super excited about the Argentine possibilities because as you know, these are one of my all-time favorite locality boas, the first type of locality boa I bred. And um, last time I bred these guys and you know attempted to breed them was back in uh, 2015. And in fact, I had a small litter. I grew up some females from that litter. And then one of them I paired up with this guy. And so this guy is still a little young. He's about, uh, he's a 2018, so he's about four years old. But he did show a lot of signs of breeding, you know, and I was really excited. Um, just not sure what happened. He seems to have lost interest lately. And the female certainly doesn't appear gravid. So he might just need another year. You know, I've had a number of times where I've tried to produce boas the first time around and it doesn't take. And then I pair up the same pair the following year and I'm successful. And so this year I have a number of boas that I was not successful at breeding last year, but I'm much more confident that I'm going to be successful uh, this year. And that's just how it is with breeding boas. You really need to be persistent. You can't give up if you fail the first time. You just have to try again next year. And so we'll have a look at my gravid boas. Typically, when I see a female that's coiled over the hot spot, she's had a shed cycle that goes on longer than normal, typically around seven to 10 days. She's in the opaque state. Uh, often I'll see, or you know, sometimes I'll see the signs of ovulation preceding that shed by about two weeks or so where the female's abdomen swells up. And then the other sign to look for that I look for is that the male loses interest in the female. And if I have all those together, I can feel pretty confident that there's pretty high chance the females grab it. Of course, that doesn't mean we're gonna get a nice litter of babies. There's always the possibility of slugs or God forbid something goes wrong, but at least it's a promising sign. So with that in mind, let's take a look at some of the females that I'm pretty confident are gravid. Here's a gravid female who's just been kind of coiled over the hot spot for the last couple months in her hiding place. This is a female Coupes Pastel Colombian boa. This is a selectively bred bloodline of Colombian boa that has been 
selectively bred for the orange pastel colors. Like you would expect most gravid boas, she's just kind of coiled tightly to conserve heat. You can see her abdomen looks pretty swollen. I think this one is probably pretty close, maybe a month or two away from giving birth. And I'm psyched about this one because I paired these guys up. My pair for the first time last year, I didn't get anything. So hopefully it took this year. We'll just have to wait and see. But these are pure Coupes Pastel. Uh, these breeders were produced by Vin Russo and he's been working on this project. It was started by a guy in Germany, Silvio Kupst, um, just selectively breeding nice Colombian boas for the beautiful deep orangey pastel colors and Vin Russo has kind of taken it to the next level so hopefully we'll have some really beautiful orangey pastel babies in this later but just really looking forward to it and they have the great disposition and temperament and easy husbandry of Colombian boa so real great uh, pet species or someone that wants a pure locality specific Colombian boa. One type of boa that I've had a lot of good luck and success with is of course the Suriname red tail and hopefully this year will be no exception and hopefully my best year yet for producing these beauties Here's a apparently gravid female. This one was a holdback from 2014 and she actually produced for the first time two years ago. So this will be her second litter. Actually had her paired up with a uh, Prometheus bloodline male. So hopefully she's got some really beautiful babies cooking up in there to continue this uh, great bloodline. And you know her bloodline is really nice too. So. These are basically my two main bloodlines coming together and should hopefully produce some really stunning babies. I recently removed the male from this uh, enclosure just because he had no interest anymore. So I'm pretty confident that she is gravid and she certainly looks gravid and you know her swollen abdomen and just lying over the hot spot trying to conserve heat, not moving very much. It's always my goal to try to produce some really world-class Suriname red tail babies and here's another shot towards that goal. This is another female. This is a 2016 holdback and I held this girl back because I just liked the look of her pattern. She's got these peak saddles but also kind of this dirty speckled look and just this really nice pinky color. And I'm pretty sure she's grabbing. Look at that abdomen there. She's just lying over the hot spot trying to conserve heat. This one was also paired up with a proven Prometheus bloodline male, so some really exciting possibilities with this one. And there she is. You can see that pretty old swollen abdomen there. Another true red tail I'm really hopeful for this year are my Peruvians. This is a Pacalpa type female and this one, she's just been kind of coiled. I actually removed her hiding place and she just kind of sits still over the hot spot, keeping that heat conserved. This one I thought was gravid last year and um, she ended up not being gravid, although she looked gravid. So that's why I'm a little bit cautious here. She really does look gravid. You know, her abdomen is swollen quite a bit. I actually still have the male in with her. You know, I decided you can see the male right next to her. I decided to just keep them together just to make sure and you know the male really hasn't shown any interest which is another sign that she's gravid and you know if he's not interested and she's not gravid it's not gonna she's not gonna become gravid anyway so but I'll probably take the male out in another couple of weeks to see how it goes. Uh, she's getting a little interested you can see the tongue flicking there. But there's a close-up just really beautiful classic yellow color for a Peruvian true red tail and hopefully there's some nice babies developing in that swollen abdomen and they'll make their appearance sometime this summer but we'll just have to see. Hopefully I'll have my first morph litters this year and this is one of them. This is a um, Hypo Jungle Moran female who I'm virtually sure is gravid. You can see how big she looks and she's just lying over her hot spot. I actually just moved her hiding place so you could see her. But this one I actually crossed with my VPIT positive male. So the babies will have Hypo Jungle and Moran genes and 
all the various combinations. Uh, no supers, of course, because the VPI is just VPI. But they'll also be het for the VPI T positive. So those will be really nice to grow up and then cross together and get some VPI T positive hypojungle morons, hopefully. But the combination of the VPI T positive and the moron together are really beautiful, very uh, bright, incandescent almost looking colors. They just kind of glow with color. And there's a close up of her face, just a very beautiful face on a boa beautiful face markings and you can see the teardrop markings under her eyes and then look at that big swollen abdomen hopefully got some nice babies cooking in there one locality boa that i produced for the first time last year that i hope to repeat this year is the longicata or long tail boa and this female definitely looks like she's showing the signs of being gravid you can see that swollen abdomen and I actually took out her hiding place, but she's just been coiled over the heat spot, conserving that heat. This is a female, or this pairing was unrelated to my pairing from last year, the, which was the Bassett bloodline. This is uh, Vin Russo's bloodline produced by Sonia Komu. And they're supposedly our het fur annery, so with any luck we might have some annery babies as well, if I do get babies. but. Looking forward to these. I held back some of the ones I produced in 2013, or 2013, in 2021. Yeah, that's where my uh, concept of time is. But in 2021, then those babies are doing real well. So love to add some unrelated ones to the group. This female has some particularly beautiful head markings and face markings. She's just really dark. Although to be honest, they don't really look all that great. You know, after they've been lying around on the heat spot when they're gravid so you know once she has her litter hopefully and sheds she should look even better here's a dwarf locality boa that I feel pretty good about the possibilities for babies and this is a crawl key boa just gonna lift up her hiding place there and um, just like my other gravid boas she's just kind of gonna get this out of the way She's just kind of coiled up over the hot spot, not really moving much. You can see how big her body looks right now. But this female is, I've proven several times before. So hopefully we'll have another real nice litter of these beautiful crawl key boas. One thing I've noticed about gravid boas is they just seem really focused. Like they don't really get distracted. They just lie still. And even though I removed her hiding place and she saw me, she's just sitting there and not really moving. And so this is another sign that she's likely gravid. And this one I would say is about as close to being 100% sure as I can be. Of course, you know, she could be full of slugs or God forbid something happens, but uh, hopefully we'll have a nice healthy litter of babies. And interestingly, even though they kind of seem like they're distracted, usually they continue to eat. Only occasionally will one not be interested in food. So I usually feed them about once a month or so, a uh, smaller than normal size rodent. And then I stop the feedings about 30 to 40 days before the expected birth date. This is a dwarf boa crossing that I'm not quite so sure about. This is a cocker key litter. And there's the female. So she's Actually, today she kind of looks gravid. She's kind of coiled over her hot spot. Her abdomen looks kind of swollen, not nearly as obvious as the crawl key. But she's a smaller female. This is a first time pairing. These guys are about six years old. So we'll just have to see. And you know, I really didn't see much signs of breeding activity with this pairing. In fact, in fact the male is still in the enclosure. That's the male right there. but. You can see he's obviously not interested in the female. I think he probably wants food because he sees me. So probably going to feed these guys tomorrow. And hopefully we'll have some baby cocker keys. I'll show you guys one more pairing. Another dwarf. And I've been getting a lot of interest in this one lately. These are the Tarahumara dwarf boas. You can see the father is still in there on the right. And then the mother is, or the potential mother is, 
on the hot spot and I'm not sure about these guys although today she looks promising she's looking pretty swollen and of course these star humor they don't get nearly as big when they get gravid because they're just tiny bows to begin with um, but we'll have to see and you know I didn't see a huge amount of breeding activity with this pair it's actually a, a 2017 holdback female and a 2018 holdback male and I took the hiding place away so we'll just have to see this one I would say maybe 50 50 although today she's looking better but I've got you know quite a few pairings that are possible at this point but I'm not just not hundred percent sure they're gravid but it's uh, part of the fun it's all a surprise it's uh, we'll just have to wait and see what happens and hopefully we'll be pleasantly surprised I haven't produced Tora Humara since I think 2019 was my last litter so a bit of a dry spell but I'm trying some new holdbacks that are younger this year so fingers crossed on these dwarf boas. thought I'd show you guys this potential first time dad for the 2022 breeding season. This is my male VPI T positive caramel albino boa and this is the guy I paired up with the hypo jungle moron who appears to be gravid right now. So really like this guy, super, he's really super mellow, very beautiful to look at, uh, really laid back, non-aggressive, great boa to handle. Um, and this guy is proof that you don't need these insane combos with all these different genes. This is a single gene boa and you know, it's just as beautiful as any morph boa, probably more so than a lot of them. So I just wanted to end the video by saying a little bit about my sales because I've getting been getting a lot of interest from you guys in my boa so I you know, really appreciate that thanks for reaching out so um, my sales terms are I don't know what boas I'm gonna have available so I've shown you some animals that appear gravid unfortunately that doesn't mean I can guarantee I'm gonna have a litter and I'm gonna have babies available but the reason I set up this channel was so that you guys could follow my pairings and my breeding success and you know plan for your own boa acquisitions so i make videos about my litters that are born and you know give you guys a uh, behind the scenes look at my boa production here so stay tuned to the channel over the next few months for more of these update videos typically my babies go on sale about a month and a half to two months after they're born assuming that they're feeding and healthy and ready to go i'm not going to ship out anything before it's fully established and ready for its new home I don't do any kind of um, waiting lists or deposits or anything like that. It's always first come, first serve once the animals are ready to go. And a lot of people reached out to me and they're like, you know, I really want your boas. I, I really need this boa for my collection. Um, you know, I, I understand that, but unfortunately, there's a lot of people that want boas now. They've become super popular lately. I'm trying to uh, produce some really nice boas so you guys can add them to your collection but the best way to assure that you get the boa that you want is just to continue to follow my channel so that you can see updates on the baby boas and when they're going to be available i try to be as fair as possible with my sales and pretty flexible about trying to you know get boas to the people that love them and want them but unfortunately this is a limited amount of uh, or there are a limited amount of boas I could produce if I could just wave a magic wand and clone thousands of these animals that would be great but unfortunately that's just not how it works so just stay tuned get the updates on this channel uh, which is your best bet of getting the boa that you want so that's a little bit about how my breeding is going of course, please stay tuned over the next couple months as I expect to have quite a few litters arriving on the scene uh, this summer and fall. And hopefully we'll have some amazing animals to look at. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.